OK。So now it's importing all of the sheets, and now we're here. Okay, let's check out our variables. Test case rows six, test steps row seven, and check out what happened, guys, with the data. So now our data is in here. We have the test cases, and we have the test steps, right? And so we got the row count of each one, and now we're going to utilize them in QTP. So here's the next step that I talked about, getting the browser array. Let's go back here. So you guys see we just imported the data sheet. By the way, all the other stuff that I did before, it's not extremely necessary. You guys can do it in your own ways, like, you know, setting up environmental variables files, setting up your sheet names, your script names, your data paths. You can do that in your own ways. But I think the way I showed is the most dynamic, but everybody has their own flavor. No big deal. But this kind of stuff is usually standard across most frameworks. So I imported the sheet, and now I'm going to get the array of browsers. And so this is some function that executes. We're not going to worry about what this function does. But I'm just going to step over it and show you guys the result. One second. OK. And let's see what this array contains. There's the array. Let me bring this up. Check it out, guys. It contains our browsers, right? IE4, IE8, IE9. And where did this come from? From that sheet, which was here. Remember that? And so now that's our array. And the, the first loop of our framework. OK. So anyways, we got our browser array. And we're going to run for every single browser in the browser array we're going to do exactly as we said. So for example, if I step in here, what's the browser process right now? Let's take a look. It should be iExplore.exe. Perfect. So now, for every single browser process, we are going to run the code for each of the loops, test cases and test step sheet. So here, I just create some variables that will hold certain values, no big deal. But what I want to get to is this next loop. OK, now this one is the one we talked about that will run from beginning, which is one to the test case rows. So let's take a look from the beginning, which is one right row one up until the test case rows, which is just want to show you guys six. OK, so let's look here. One, two, three, four, five, six from the beginning to the end. And you guys see why that's so dynamic, right? Because it doesn't matter how many rows you have, you'll always get the right count and you'll always run from the beginning to the end. Next step we do is we set the current row so that it's over here, which is on I, right? Our I is currently one. Remember guys what I did manually. Now this is exactly the code to execute this. So just remember what I did manually. What did I do? And when you see this happening, just translate it into that manual process. Okay? So next, we check to see if this test flag is execute. That's actually one thing I missed for you guys. And let me mention that. So we get this if it's execute, which is also another step, right? Some test cases we may not want to execute. If we have like a smoke test suite that we're running, then we may only want to execute three out of these, right? Or we may execute, you know, if we have a large smoke test, we may want to execute 10 out of 100. We don't want to run all of them. So this execute flag tells us if it's a yes, then we capture this test case ID. And in this case, it is a yes. And so we're going to go into the test step sheet, right? So now you guys see another counter up until test step rows. Check it out here test step rows, which would be seven from one to seven. We're going to set that current row. Boom. You guys see that? Now we're here. Now here I'm just grabbing input parameters. These are here. I'm splitting them by the pipes. And now we were at this step. This step is what compares our test case ID from the test cases sheet. You guys see that? To the test case ID from the test step sheet. In fact, let's look at these values. There's one. And let me see number two. 